joined now by this good-looking duo right here. <laughs> yes, Kurt and Wyatt Russell. I almost like feel like I'm seeing double a little bit. <laughs> you guys are the stars, and you're, of course, family of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Now, I told you I started watching this, and the minute that Wyatt came on screen, I said, did they do a de-aging thing on Kurt? <laughs> on screen, you guys look a lot alike. Yeah, well, that was the fun part of it, wasn't it? I yeah. mean, we were, we were being... Uh, given this opportunity to play the same person mm -hmm. as opposed to father and son. So we, we, we started hammering away at it and saying, let's, let's make this good. Let's, let's do this. Let's, yeah. Because it was a great, it was a great, you know, Godzilla is an interesting world. Yeah. You know, um, I want to ask you about that because you said that Godzilla is a character that had like a huge impact on you since well, you yeah, were a child. You can't forget it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was probably, I don't know, maybe eight years old or something mm -hmm. when I first saw Godzilla, and it, it, that was an image that I never forgot. I, what I love about sci-fi is great sci-fi is an opportunity to, <clears throat> you know, uh, to examine some questions, uh, huge questions. Yeah. You know, wh where are we from? What's it all about? What's what's going on here? And uh, it was just a, you know, f for me, it was a wonderful opportunity to get to work with Wyatt. I do feel like too, though, it's a little bit of a. You know, you know how sometimes you, you want to play uh, cowboys and Indians and whatnot when you're a little kid and you played and then you get to do something like that in a movie and it's a bit of a life realization. Is it for you? I mean, because you saw Godzilla at eight, it had an impact on you. And now, you know, you get to play in this monster verse. I wonder what like the, the kid Kurt Russell would think about that. Yeah, I mean, um, my dad was the one who said all he wanted to ever do was uh, play baseball and play cowboys yeah. and Indians. And that's what he did with his life. And he <laughs> passed that on to me. The world is on fire. If you want to save millions of lives, we can use some help. So let's introduce the audience to Lee Shaw, because you guys play the same character um, in different timelines, spanning across, I think, about 50 years, right? So um, you've been asked to play father and son before, but why was playing, like, the same role really attractive and different to you guys? It was because the, the, the father and son is, like, low-hanging fruit. Okay. And we have never been people, I don't know, gen genetically, who have gone for low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. It's just not, it's just never been very interesting. It's never been interesting in his career. It wasn't what I looked at. It was like, well, what's the hardest thing you can do and what's a challenge that's unique that will actually you know, create something for people who are watching that's like unique for them to see. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a challenge in order to be able to do that. We had to we had to be in cahoots with things and it was more pre-production stuff because we weren't going to be on set together. So we had to be like in lockstep a little bit and you you'd come to set and do that. Yeah, I, I did something that was very, uh, it, was, it was just on a professional level. I, I suddenly found myself saying, God, well, why it's going to create this character? Mm -hmm. I'm going to play him later on in life, so it's got to all make sense. And I suddenly realized, you know, I've watched him all my life, but I've never examined him. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never said, well, what yeah. does he do? You know, and then I started watching him just as an actor, observing like we do in life, right? And uh, that, was, that was really interesting because mm -hmm. I started seeing things about him that I, I could understand, I could feel and oh, I do that too. It's like, you know, so we did, you know, without, without getting um, cartoonish about it, uh -huh. you know, we just tried to both f right. f f walk this fine line of saying, this is the same guy, it's not father and son. You make a great point because you do have a lot of the same mannerisms. Uh -huh. Well, we use and them. In real life though, Wyatt, doesn't it freak you out when we start to do the same things that our parents do? Sometimes I find myself standing like my mother and doing, and I'm like, woo, yeah. it freaks me out. Well, no, I, you know, I, I, I uh, it's funny. I see it, what's, what, what's freaky to me is, yeah, that, that sort of feels inevitable in certain ways where you're like, of course I'm gonna do it. Like, oh, that was my, I'm gonna do it that way. That was my example. But yeah, I but we see also my spend our son, whole lives saying, oh, oh, you see it in your I son. I see in my own son more than I see in myself <laughs> physicality of my dad. Really? Yeah, well, like, genes are recessive and traits are <laughs> so recessive. Crazy. And there's do you certain see things it in my buddy son too? does. Absolutely, absolutely. Where I'm like, oh my God, you're like my dad. <laughs> You're like Gogi, <laughs> like I don't do things that way. Like I didn't have that energy. You you are like him that way. You know, and that's like so wild. Meredith and, and Wyatt uh, named uh, their their first son mm -hmm. Buddy. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather was Buddy Russell, Bud Russell. Aww. And he's the first child. We have seven grandchildren, right? And Golgi and I, and we, he's the first child, grandchild, or great-grandchild that in any way 
resembles the uh, certain likenesses of Buddy of oh. my grandfather. And boy, has he got a lot of them. I yeah. love that. <laughs> what was it like having two Russell men on the set? Was it jokes and pranks? Was it, how no, are you guys no. when you're on working together? I think we're pretty professional working with, with my dad. It's like, it was the most wonderful experience. He's the most giving actor. Mm -hmm. He listens to everything everybody has to say. I think in his mind, he's probably more forceful than he is. I think off camera, we're both very similar, where it's like, no, it has to be right. <laughs> that's the time where you can argue yeah. and you can, yeah. that's 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 what creative process is. If, if everybody's just going like, yeah, we're awesome. <laughs> like, this is gonna be amazing. Can we throw it back real quick? Because you guys, um, you have spent a lot of time together on sets over the years. And I just wanna show you something because of course E.T., that E.T. vault never disappoints. How about these oh two kids? Oh my God, where did you How about find that? this? That's a riot. Oh, this is crazy. Uh, it's so funny. This was uh, in, uh, in, in um, Texas, right? Yeah, 1997 on the set of Hope yeah. with Goldie. Yeah, Goldie was directing the yeah. show. You were 10 years old, Goldie was directing. Should have been a baseball player. <laughs> 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 That's it. Well, he what went do into you professional remember about hockey. He went into professional yes. hockey. I always I said, dude, you're built to play ball. You're, you're, you're going to be a catcher. You had an and arm. And when he was 12 years old, he, <laughs> when he was 12 years old, he said, Dad, I want to play hockey all the time now. It was it was a tough thing to pill to swallow, uh -huh. Listen, I grew but up it was you know it was, yeah <laughs> baseball is my first love. What do you remember about being on that set? Because you said you were ten years old. What do you remember about that time being on set with your parents there? Um, uh, that it's sort of an amalgamous thing with being on set because we would come um, for certain chunks of it and then like you know we'd school and stuff. Mm -hmm. We go 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 home. That one specifically was really cool. My mom was directing it, so. Uh, I actually remember a lot from that set. It was sort of like you, you had a you, there was an element of independence that you had because the movie said sort of like you can run I could run around and it was cordoned off and mm -hmm. there was all kinds of areas to explore. So it was always really fun. Um, you were on Tombstone. You had Tombstone. a lot. You had a lot of fun because you got to drive the cart. Got to drive the cart. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier you were saying you never like were really interested in superhero movies, no. and now you're in a superhero movie and a monster. I think <laughs> when they said like we'd love you to be Captain America, I'm like, do you have the right guy? <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you, like, do you know who you're, you're, you're who you're hiring? But uh, and all jokes aside, I was excited to like create a character, and mm -hmm. in the, in a world where I have no preconceived notion of what I'm supposed to be. Um, that's a good place for me creatively to create, try and create a character, mm -hmm. and I and I and I've loved doing it because a lot of the times we think you're constrained by the grandiosity of of what it is, like whether it's Marvel or Godzilla or whatever. You you can actually, if you really let go, like and and are you bring your ideas to it, and you have to be, feel confident that you're going to bring your ideas to it, and they're going to be good. You can make it something really cool and worth watching. So, you know. Hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll always mix in a little weird Wyatt one every now and then, yeah. but but Marvel, it'll be fun, it'll be interesting. Have you seen a script? Yeah, I've seen a script. It's it's still being made, you know, it's still being worked and right. reworked, and you know, they, they say it's like, um, this was, ours was a little bit like it too, it's like it's like trying to to rebuild a moving train. You know, when, when, when you have these like dates that are so hard set, mm -hmm. Uh, it's like you're you're backing into that always, so you don't have the, the you don't have the you know you're just always feeling like you're up against it, and so the, the, hopefully they're gonna really let us like rip some new things and we'll see what happens. You were part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe too, although your character isn't still around anymore. But in these things, anything could happen. Well, when so you're, what? When, when you're when you're your own planet, <laughs> right? When you when you when you are a, a demigod. Yeah, you, look at you. I always look at that and look I was like, and there's a hey man. He, he, you know, you, you never know where that might show up. This year marks 40 years for you and Miss Goldie. Yes. Yeah, we 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 had a well coming up with next year. Yeah. In, in uh, February. That's like eight port. lifetimes in Hollywood, Kurt. It really, right. it really is. And I know people ask you this all the time, like what the secret to a lasting relationship. Is it because you guys never formally got married and just no. said we're committed, like we choosing just to commit every day? No, I, I, the, the truth is I, I, I don't have any answers. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any questions about it. You just do it, it's a day to day. Mm -hmm. you, you're living a life together. I do think that love conquers all, so I think that we live in that in that zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you one thing, after 40 years, you're going to have experienced just about everything Every you can experience. Yeah. And I think that's that's what's fun about it yeah. for me. I mean, that and it's just the person. Goldie's, you know, she's incredibly unique. She's incredibly 
For me, she's, it was everything. So I was, I was all good. I love hearing you that. Know, we, we made a I'm, I'm in love with that. <laughs> <laughs> Not without her. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's good. That was really good. You, um, why well, you have a growing family too? I know you and your wife announced you're going to have another baby. Buddy's going to be a big brother. Buddy's going to be a big brother. Yes. How are you guys preparing to be a family of four? And is like, what talks do you have with Buddy about? Like, okay, so Buddy else is coming um it's there's no right way to do it i don't think it's we 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 we, we, we tell him you know it's excited to be a, you're, are you excited to be a big brother and you, you know you gotta teach your bro how to do certain things Aww. and do this but at the end of the day like i think you forget and like i was what we were talking about earlier like when he's three he's gonna be three you start to remember things when you're three and and, he, and he's his own person yeah and so, however he's gonna react, like I, I don't want to force things onto my son that he doesn't want to do, and you know, it's it's a change, and it's, he's an only child right now, and so whatever happens, it happens, and you deal with the things as they come. And so, I, what I've learned as a parent is the only thing that, that can really screw you up is um, putting expectations on something, and that so I, what I've practiced and. Meredith and I are both pretty good at doing is like you don't don't put an expectation on it. Mm -hmm. What comes comes and it's all it's all a joy yeah. no matter what. I love that and I I love like just seeing the dynamic between the two of you. It, it really is. It's fun. It's special. <laughs> it's good. And congratulations <laughs> on the series because it is really really good. Thank, Thank you so much. Really it's really good. good. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you too. <laughs>